let's solve a quite easy problem, find first and last position of some target value x in a sorted array. The title of this problem is already the whole statement. We are given sorted array and some target value x. We are looking for that value x in the array, maybe it occurs a few times in a row. We need to find first and last position or say that there isn't such value. This is a coding interview question often asked by Facebook. Elements of the array are indexed from 0 to n-1, n is length of the array, and apart from the array itself we are given the target value x, an int, and we need to find, in this case, first position would be find, the last one would be 7, and we need to return two integers 5, 7. For this array and target value x equal to 5, then I would need to return minus 1, minus 1, in this problem it denotes no such element. When you hear about a sorted array and searching for some element, I hope you immediately think about one particular algorithm, but this problem is about some details. How to avoid two separate implementations of that particular algorithm that we will discuss in a moment? How to do it nicely? How to make sure that we not, don't make a mistake? We will talk about that in a moment. I'm very happy to say that I got a sponsor for this video. You likely already heard about Team Blind. It's a big platform with, in particular, inside information about salaries from big companies like Google and Facebook. And now their new service is called Rooftop Slashy. It's a place where you can ask those software engineers at those companies to verify your resume and in particular to ask for referrals. It's something extremely unique. You can upload your resume, pay a small fee for that, get feedback for this, and if your resume is good enough, then get a referral. The very cool thing about it is that not just any recruiter reads your resume. A recruiter could not know technologies, a recruiter could just look at the university you attended, whether you are from good school or not. Engineer will look at your skills, and you can get a referral just like that. If you want to get to any fine company, then for sure check out Rooftop Slashy and use link in the description for discount. Let's get back to the video. For sure we want to use binary search. This is algorithm in particular to find a single value in the sorted array. We ask about middle element, let's say that the target value x is equal to 8. Middle element is say 6, then we need to go to the right. Now we are searching in this part. What if now we ask about this middle element, it, it turns out to be 8. Let's say that we focus on finding the first 8. Then we know that the first 8 is somewhere here. It's this one or more to the left. Uh, there are multiple possible implementations of binary search. I covered one of them in my lectures on YouTube. You can watch them if you want. But I save this position as possible answer and then go more to the left. We'll see that in a moment. And I can implement this binary search, always ask about a middle element, if it's good, then save it as possible answer and go to the left, otherwise go to the right, do something similar to find the last value, so here maybe there will be 8 and you will know this is first, then run binary search, separate binary search to find the last value and it will be different. The code will look something like this. Search in interval from 0 to n minus 1, take middle position. If this is exactly x, then overwrite this as best found first position uh, there is so far and go to the left. High is middle element minus 1, my middle position minus 1. Otherwise, if this is too big, smaller values will be to the left. Otherwise, you need to go to the right. This can be compressed a little bit, but this format is quite nice to understand, at least for me. Now, first position is either minus 1, and this denotes nothing was found. If this is minus 1, return a pair, a vector, minus 1, minus 1. Otherwise, do the same to find the last element, the last position of x. It's bad to copy-paste this or to rewrite something very similar. It won't be exactly the same. So instead of doing this, let's think. Thinking is very good in programming. If I have a piece of code that is able to find the first occurrence of some value, let's say first occurrence of 8, and then I know maybe there will be some values 8 here, then is it enough to solve the whole problem? The problem being find the first and last occurrence. Also equivalent problem would be count the number of elements 8. 
elements equal to x. Uh, well, this last occurrence will be just a moment before before what? Here is not necessarily 9. I could I almost wanted to say that there is 9 here. Then I would run my algorithm again and find the first 9. But this is not true. Maybe here there is 12 or there is the end of the array. But this value just after the interval of 8s, these are all 8s, the next value is first value greater than 8 or greater than equal 9. And in fact, with binary search and with what we already did, it's very easy to find position of the first element greater than or equal to something. This is the only binary search we need. This, we can also say that this is first position greater than or equal to 8. This is first position greater than or equal to 9. If we find those two with the same piece of algorithm of code, this will be with just a function. Then we can say if this is i, this is j, then from i to j minus 1 is our interval. I will slightly modify the code. Now instead of first position of x, this is first greater equal x. So uh, this will also be simplified in fact, because searching for first at least something is easier than first equal to something. If this is at least indeed at least x, then this is possible first position and go to the left. Otherwise, if this is too small, oh, I had a mistake in a comment earlier, this is smaller than, uh, right, yes. Uh, else this is smaller than x, so go to the right. This is everything, because here the first value, at least x, will be more to the right. If first pos is minus 1, then minus 1, minus 1, we can say, actually, the fact that we found something greater than or equal to uh, x doesn't mean an anything, doesn't mean that there is value exactly x. I will say or a of first pos is not x. It can only be greater than x, because we are looking for value at least x. And now I want to run the same thing, just with x bigger than 1. So I will keep that, uh, I will make this into a function. Now first is first pause of a and x, last is first pause of a x plus 1, minus 1, this found the first element after the interval of values x, minus 1 is exactly this last one. If this is non-empty, if first smaller equal last, then return this pair, first last, otherwise return minus 1, minus 1. I have a small mistake. Uh, in my binary search, this is the default value. If I don't find it anywhere here, then I return that. Actually, if I don't find anything at least, let's say, 5, because the array was 1, 2, 3, it makes a lot of sense to say the first element at least 5 is after the array. It, it would be there at least. I'm going to change this into n. What this will change is if, uh, let's say, the array is just 5 and 6, and I'm looking for 6, then 6 will be found here, 7 will be found, at least 7 will be found after that, and minus 1 gets me again here. Now this is correct. In, at least in C++ we can make it even easier if we are allowed to use some built-in functions, because my function first position, at least x, is already implemented in STL. It's called lower bound. You can use lower bound of a begin, a x, and a end, and x. And the same with x plus 1. With this it's even easier. You can try that later on your own if you use C++. This code is in my repository. Link is in the description below the video. Also there's a link to rooftop slashy. Go check it out if you want to get to big companies and you're interested in getting some referrals or at least your resume being reviewed. And that's it from me. Bye, have a nice day.